Commencement is a time to celebrate enduring traditions. At Western, ours is a tradition of making a difference, of being the difference. Today, we honor that tradition by presenting an honorary doctorate degree from Western Washington University, made in recognition of exemplary contributions to humankind. I invite Mr. Gary Locke to please come forward. Provost Carbajal and Trustee Thompson, please step forward to assist me in awarding the degree. The Honorable Gary Locke, former governor of Washington State, recently completed two years as the U.S. Ambassador to China, where he was instrumental in encouraging Chinese companies to do business in the United States. He also streamlined travel between the United States and China by drastically reducing wait times for Chinese citizens to obtain visas to visit the United States. What made a greater impression on the Chinese people was Mr. Locke's reputation as a high-profile leader who eschews the trapping of power and carries his own backpack. Long before the famous photo of Mr. Locke and his daughter at a Starbucks counter at SeaTac drew international attention, Washington residents knew Mr. Locke for his lack of pretension and ability to get things done. Born and raised in Seattle, Mr. Locke graduated from Seattle's Franklin High School, earned a bachelor's degree from Yale University, and a law degree from Boston University. In 1987, he was elected to represent Central Washington in the Washington House of Representatives, where he served as chair of the Appropriations Committee. In 1993, he was elected King County Executive. He served two terms as governor from 1997 to 2005, and was known for promoting international trade and making education a budgetary priority. In 2009, President Obama nominated Locke to serve in his cabinet as the Secretary of Commerce. The President then later nominated in 2011 Mr. Locke to be Ambassador to China. He was the first Chinese American to serve as a U.S. Governor, Commerce Secretary, or U.S. Ambassador to China. Now home in Seattle with his wife, Mona Lee Locke, and his three children, he plans to continue building relationships between the two nations, both as a business advisor to Chinese and U.S. companies, and by encouraging more exchanges between colleges, universities, and nonprofit organizations in both countries. Throughout his distinguished career, Mr. Locke's emphasis has been on getting things done rather than on getting credit, on holding positions of public trust not as ends in themselves, not for the trappings, but as means to humbly serve the best interests of the people. It's been about going about important purposes while carrying your own backpack. On the recommendation of the faculty of Western Washington University, and by the authority vested in me by our Board of Trustees, and in conformity with the laws of the State of Washington, it is with great pride that I confer upon you the Honorary Doctorate of Humane Letters with all the responsibilities, privileges, and honors thereto pertaining. It is also a pleasure to announce that Mr. Gary Locke is your commencement speaker. Gary. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, President Shepard, for this incredible and moving honor. And thank you for your leadership of this great institution. Chairman Peggy Zorro, and to the members of the Board of Trustees, the faculty, the staff, the students, and families, and guests, I have to tell you, I'm really excited to be part of this momentous day and so thrilled to be back on this incredible campus. It's been years since I've been here, 
and it's more beautiful than ever before. Most of all, congratulations to the outstanding class of 2014 and to the parents, families, and friends of every graduate and to the faculty and staff who have made this day possible. For decades, Western was primarily known as our state's teacher's college and later for its environmental programs, serving almost exclusively Washington State residents. But today, it's one of the premier liberal arts colleges in America with students from 33 states and a growing international flavor of students from 10 countries spanning Europe, Asia, Africa, and Latin America. And Western Washington University has produced many of our nation's best, brightest, and globally committed over the years, including last year's nine Fulbright scholars and more alums in the Peace Corps than any other college of its kind in America. For you graduates, today symbolizes your intense investment of time and energy, mind and body, and heart and soul. For the families, today is the culmination of your support, sacrifice, trust, encouragement, and even nagging. And together, students and family, you've placed your profound faith in the future. Today, we keep and honor that faith. Today is proof that the American dream of a college education is strong and lives on. And despite all the hard work, the sacrifices, and the high tuition paid by you and your parents, the purpose of education is not to help you lead more comfortable lives, but to lead more useful and meaningful lives. Much has been said about the opportunities ahead of you and the benefits that you've obtained from your education here at Western. Professor Neem and your student speaker, Brian O'Sullivan, have talked about that. So I want to talk a little bit about something different. While serving as ambassador in China, I met a man who epitomized the power of education to transform lives and to uplift and improve his community. I'm talking about a man named Chun Guangchun, commonly known as the blind activist. Born into a very poor family in the countryside, Chun was blinded while an infant from a fever that destroyed his optical nerves. He learned from his father and his brothers reading to him, reading books to him. At age 18, he started in the first grade at an elementary school for the blind. And 10 years later, at the age of 28, he enrolled in a university of traditional Chinese medicine where he studied massage therapy, one of the few occupations and one of the few programs available to the blind. But by then, Chun was already developing a passion for the law, and his brothers would read legal books to him, including one titled, the law protecting the disabled, given to him by his father. And while working as a masseuse at a local hospital, Chun became an outspoken advocate and a voice for the disabled. Self-taught in the law, he gradually expanded the issues he took on. But cause after cause was successful, from helping a disabled elderly couple who had been unjustly taxed, to stopping illegal environmental pollution, to confronting local corruption, to exposing illegal confiscation of land from farmers. Finally, he brought on a class action lawsuit against local officials who had forced women to undergo late-term abortions and even sterilizations. And then he met with the press, the foreign press, to publicize these injustices and abuses. By then, the local officials had had enough. He was arrested on trumped-up charges of instigating others to destroy property and assembling a crowd to disrupt traffic. How he could have done that under the constant supervision of the police is beyond belief. Not allowed to have his lawyers or family in the courtroom, he was convicted and sentenced to over four years in prison. After his release, he was placed under house arrest and closely monitored by hundreds of local police and not allowed visitors be they the foreign press, supporters, admirers, or other activists, who often were stoned or beaten to keep them away from him and his family. 
In the spring of 2012, he escaped from that little rural village. With the help of his wife, in the middle of the night, he climbed over the stone wall surrounding his home, breaking his foot in the process. Somehow, he made his way during the night to the nearby villages where people he had helped previously took him in and gave him refuge. And then he was able to rendezvous with his supporters that he was able to contact by cell phone. And they eventually took him hundreds of miles away to Beijing. A few days later, U.S. Embassy personnel, in scenes taken straight out of Mission Impossible or Born Supremacy, replete with car chases through busy traffic and zipping down dead-end alleys, our people picked him up and brought him back to the U.S. Embassy for safe refuge and medical attention. Of course, this created a huge international diplomatic incident. But what's not well understood is that when Mr. Chun came to the U.S. Embassy, he was not seeking to leave China for the United States. He was not seeking asylum in the United States. He was not trying to defect. Instead, all he wanted was temporary safe refuge in our embassy while he tried to expose and stop the constant harassment and abuse that his family suffered in their rural village. He believed that democracy would soon come to China, and he wanted to stay in China to help bring it about. He wanted to attend a university in a different province or state and continue to study the law. And he wanted his family to be able to leave the village and to be with him. Because what's not well known is that in China, people are not free to move from the rural countryside to a different city, to move from one state or province to another. You have to have government permission. And if you do move, you lose all the social benefits. Your children are not entitled to education in your new destination or health care, and the list goes on and on. In the end, the Chinese government agreed to his demands, and he left the embassy. But within a day, he had a change of heart. His friends and fellow activists throughout China convinced him to not trust the Chinese government, convinced him not to stay in China, but instead seek to go to America. That's another story. But suffice it to say, we were eventually able to convince the Chinese government to let Mr. Chun and his entire family leave for America and go to NYU, which gave him and his entire family room and board and allowed him to continue to pursue his passion, the study of law. As a blind person, a second-class citizen, he could have accepted his fate and continued to work as a masseuse. But he had a thirst for education and a passion for the law. And what he learned from the legal books read to him, he used to challenge corruption and moral and legal injustice and to uphold human rights and democracy. His pursuit of knowledge clearly was not to make his life more comfortable, but to help others. Like Mr. Chun, you, the graduates of 2014, must use the power of education to confront, understand, and alleviate suffering and conflict in our society, to move our civilization forward. You know too much, and you're too talented to turn your backs on disease, poverty, intolerance, and tyranny, whether in America or elsewhere around the world. There is so much that you can and must accomplish in the years ahead, using the gift and the power of education that you've received here at Western Washington University. You must put an end to terrorism and war. The planet is waiting for your leadership and solutions to global warming and to the preservation of our precious environment. Dreaded diseases like cancer await cures, and many other diseases that we once thought we had tamed are reemerging, resistant to current treatments. And the numbers of those struggling with hunger and poverty are on the rise. We must all continue to work for a world in which all humanity recognizes its shared destiny, in which every individual, every family, every community realizes its fullest potential. Your generation is poised to make great things happen. As I look out on this wonderful sea of faces, I see and feel a powerful promise, the promise that you will indeed move our civilization forward. And you can do so only with the gift and the power of education you have received 
And as others have said, your education does not stop with this degree. Like Mr. Chun, pursue lifelong learning. Discover on your own. Educate yourself on your own. Never before have the challenges facing our planet and our, and our species been so daunting. But never before has a generation of young scholars been better prepared to make the most of the opportunities ahead. And when you finally hold that diploma in your hand today, you'll be holding both the power of education and the responsibility for human progress. Honor both. Congratulations to the Western Washington University class of 2014, and be proud, because we are all so proud of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Locke.